Hello, welcome to the James Cooley Show. It's your life. I'm your host, Dr. James J.C. Cooley. And wow, we got this absolutely fantastic guest on the show. Uh, been here for quite some time. I think it's kind of like a permanent fixture of the show. And we love him. Uh, and we're going to be talking about a topic that uh, I think it affects us all. Regardless of who you are, where you at in the world, et cetera, everybody is affected by adversity. So we're going to talk about that one. We're going to get a, a lot of understanding from this great doc that's going to be with us today. And I tell you, I'm excited about this show. I'm ready to get started. So, but I can't do anything without co-host Dr. Michelle Cooley. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, James. You know, we love having this guest on our show. Gosh, guests, guest co-hosts, you know, lifetime members. So we're really excited to have them on the show. And you're right. This is a really good topic. This is part of our 360 degree health topic. Um, you know, when it comes to adversity, no one is exempt. And, you know, sometimes people say, why me? Why me? I'm a good person. I'm a good person. But things happen in life that are beyond our control is about how we deal with them. So we're really interested in hearing Dr. Michael Mantel's thoughts on this topic. I'm excited as well. And just like you mentioned, he is the, the co-host of 306 Degrees uh, Health. And so uh, anytime we're talking about health in any capacity, somebody is always going to be benefit from this. So uh, Ms. Ship, can you please introduce the topic, title, and purpose? And yes. also this great, great guest. Oh, yes. Again, 360-degree health series. When it comes to adversity, no one is exempt. So we're having a conversation with Dr. Michael Mantel. He's a cognitive behavioral coach, keynote speaker, author, and advisor. He's going to talk about how can we best deal with adversity? How does changing the way we think help us live better lives? How can we stubbornly refuse to make ourselves miserable? And six words to happier living. So for nearly 50 years, Dr. Mantel has been helping people of all ages and backgrounds to serve themselves less and create lasting positive change with his compassion-based, rational, emotive behavior coaching methods. Earned his PhD at the University of Pennsylvania after completing his uh, master's degree in clinical psychology at Hanham Han, sorry, I mispronounced that, Medical College. He has served as chief psychologist at Children's Hospital in San Diego, chief psychologist for the San Diego Police Department, chief behavioral science consulting for the American Council on Exercise, co-founder, chief science officer of Plus Size Certified Inc., and he has so many more so many more titles. He's led three-day intensive programs for the American Society of Hematology on Physician Wellness and Burnout and presents a twice-monthly optimal living series for the same organization. He has authored many books, uh, including his first, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. Yes, it's all small stuff. So please, please welcome back to the show, Dr. Michael Mantel. Hi, everyone. What a, what a lovely introduction. Thank you very much. <laughs> how, are you, how are you doing, Mike? Hi. How, how, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing great. I'm just wondering, like, am I going to be asking myself questions as a co-host <laughs> today? I mean, oh, my goodness. Talk about adversity. <laughs> I was up all night worrying about this. <laughs> we, we, we might get around to that. Where we okay, <laughs> yeah. you know, no, it's, so. it's an honor and privilege to be on as a co-host, as a guest, uh, friend, whatever. So I'm looking forward to... Uh, helping our audience learn how to deal with life's adversities that are inevitable. Yeah, you know, I, and I think, uh, I, just like I said earlier, this is an extraordinary topic to talk about. Uh, Dr. Mike, can you tell uh, our viewers and our listeners why was it so important that you chose this topic uh, to explain to them today? Absolutely. We are living in very, very difficult times. It seems like wherever you look, uh, there is uh, stressful events, whatever the topic may be. And so the uh, mental group, the group called Mental Health America, in the year I was born, 1949, named the month of May, the coming month, Mental Health Month. And I thought, what a perfect time for us to dive in and look at how we can help people increase and improve and up-level 
their emotional well-being and wellness. We know that the data tells us that one in five people, one in five, 20%, will experience a mental health condition in any given year. And everyone, we all face challenges in life that can impact our emotional well-being. We also know that about 50%, some say a little more, uh, of Americans will meet the criteria for a diagnosable mental health condition sometime in their lives with symptoms that interfere with our lives that begin at about age 14. So I thought this was a very important topic and one that I hope that our tens of thousands of listeners and viewers can walk away with a toolbox, a toolkit to use every day, small habits to uplift themselves. And understand something that I'm gonna say many times, Something happens over there, and we're over here. We have the choice as to how we are going to respond. We can choose to make ourselves miserable about that or choose to look at it in a different way and cope with it in a healthier way. Wow. You know, you, you, you mentioned something in there, Doc, uh, as, you know, individual response. Uh, how do they respond? And how, what are the factors for them making the decision or going into the closet and being in dark or coming out and facing whatever adversity that they may have? So, Doc, uh, what what are some of the factors that influence uh, people that are having adversity and they don't want to really stand up and be resilient about <laughs> Uh, what they're going to. Can you talk about well, that? Well, sure, of course. Why would someone not want to be resilient and deal well with life? Many reasons. People's responses to adversity run the gamut. There's no single typical way to react. It can be a complex interplay of emotions and behavior. So if we have people who will go into a fight or flight response, a very primal reaction, that's uh, triggered by the sympathetic nervous system. We fight or we run. We fight because we demand things to be different than they're not. And we make ourselves enraged or we tell ourselves something horrible, awful, terrible is going to happen and we run. Then we have people who live with acceptance and problem solving. That, that is to say they take a more measured approach to life, accepting a situation, focusing their energy on finding solutions. Then we have people who have uh, emotional reactions. In other words, adver adversities, situations that we don't like, that we think must not occur or must be different, evoke a range of emotion, anger, anxiety, or depression. Think about that. All emotions are on those three continua. We have depression from suicidal depression all the way to happiness. We have anxiety, frozen panic, all the way to tranquility, rest, relaxation. And then we have um, anger, enraged hostility, murderous rage, all the way to love and uh, admiration. And whether it's personality or social factors, the support we have around us, uh, our life experiences, our cognitive skills, all of these things enter into how we choose to respond. Wow. Doc, you see so many patients and you chat with them about these things over a variety or issues or adversities or tragedies uh, that happened. Uh, to them, how does changing the way one think help them live a better and productive lives? That is the key to all of it. Uh, the clients that I see now in coaching, I uh, retired from clinical practice seeing patients as a psychologist a number of years ago, but the same type of uh, uh, issue. Um, the way we we think 
that's the title of my my most recent book, which I just happened to have a copy of. <laughs> there it is. The link is what you think. Meaning, an event happens, and then we are given a moment to think about it. Sometimes we think fast, and we don't take that moment. Sometimes we slow ourselves down, and we do take that moment. If we change the way we think, we change the way we feel. If we change the way we feel, we change the way we react. And so there are a number of thoughts that can make us feel worse or make us feel better. And uh, we'll be getting into that. So I'm going to wait until that unfolds a bit. But just understand that whenever someone says something, does something, doesn't do something, an event happens, traffic, finance, career, health, whatever it may be, our opportunity is like a golf ball on a tee. How are you going to think about this? It's up to you, Michael. Want to make yourself miserable, suffer, or do you want to deal with it in a healthier way? If you can't change it, it's up to you to change your own reaction to it. You know, we got to take a station break, but I want to get back and I want to dive off into the book. We haven't done that on, on previous shows yet. Uh, I want to get your, your thoughts on how you came up with the topic. Why did you think that was important in writing the bestseller and, and getting it out there and 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 continuously pushing uh, that uh, masterpiece of writing out to others? So the link is what you think. And I just want to dive off into that one this time. So yeah, yeah. whichever platform that you're watching this on, all you have to do is go to the comments, ask any questions that you might have. Or you can pick up the phone now, one 344 1178 It's your answer. Uh, Casey, BQ, FM, Lane 6.1, AM 1170, San Diego. And I tell you, we'll get you an answer. Yes. Your life, and we'll see you shortly after the break. in you takes you on an inward journey of discovery that dramatically transforms your outward experience of life. Discover the power of belief. Utilize it in connection with science to create a vision of meaning and purpose that pulls you forward. Let go of the meager me to discover the magnificent me. Let go of your painful past and live life free from fear worry and stagnation experience an abundant universe as you powerfully create happiness relationships health and limitless opportunities when you heal your mind all things are possible i've seen a smile convey i love you i'm proud of who you are one that keeps us close when we're apart Talking from the darkness of all that we've been through It seems that there might be A way to leave behind the loneliness we've known And live again
Welcome back to James Cooley Show. It's life. And I got my main man, Dr. Mike <laughs> Mantel. It's always a pleasure doing shows with you and you being a, a guest uh, co-host and just uh, doing a show where you're not the guest co-host today. <laughs> and we, we get an opt. I think we, we, we might have to reverse this role one day, Doc. Okay. You're going to be the guest. I, I will be the guest. Right. I love that idea. I, I, I say we do that one day next week. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. We'll do it. <laughs> I think it would be great. As Don, long as we as long as we have the expert producer and uh, co-host Dr. Michelle Cooley helping us do it, oh, we're on. She, she would do it. Doc, I can tell you, and you can't see these numbers right now, but we're close to 4,000 live viewers on uh, YouTube alone. That's just my uh, friends and family. <laughs> and we just uh, went live on a, on a platform called Rumble. Oh, so uh, we got, got thousands. Of, I can see the numbers here, and it's just absolutely fantastic. But well, 50, well, 50, we, 000 subscribers on YouTube alone, darn <laughs> impressive. So, uh, and we're averaging five thousand per month, five thousand new subscribers per months. month. Ever since we shot, start shooting. Uh, 306 degree of oh, hell. So great. I give you most of that credit, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so, Doc, um, first of all, I, I want to pick it up from where we was at. And, and can you hold your book back up one more time? Let's see if I can. Yeah, there we go. The link is what you think. Whoops. The yeah. link is what you, I wanted all of our audience to know to be able to see this, because I want to dive off into this one. But before we dive off into that, it, how can we stubbornly refuse to make ourselves miserable? Ah, oh, my goodness. That is the question, isn't it? Who <laughs> doesn't want to be happy today? Um, unfortunately, there are a lot of people who seem to uh, enjoy in some interesting way being miserable. But let's talk. I teach people in my, in my coaching sessions how to uh, refuse to make yourself miserable. Here's how. Now, an event occurs. That's called the A, the adversity. Then we have a feeling, a consequence, the C, the consequence, an emotional consequence. And uh, we're in a traffic jam, let's say. And boy, does that make me angry. And then we have a, we have a, a, an a, a, B, C. The B stands for our belief. A belief about what? About the event, the adversity. So traffic jam occurs. We tell ourselves, this shouldn't happen. This is horrible. I can't stand it. Well, and behold, the C, the consequence we have is that we're angry. What if I don't want to be angry? I don't want to be miserable. Well, what do I change? The traffic? I can't change the traffic. I can change the cause of my emotion, which is my belief about that traffic. You see, many people think the activating event in life, the adversity, let's say, causes the emotion. Look at the screen for a moment. This is incredible. In the upper corner up there, I'm not sure if it's right or left on when, when you're looking, but in the upper uh, left-hand corner of the screen, that's the adversity. In the lower right-hand corner, that's the emotion. Up there in the upper right-hand corner is our belief about that adversity. So if you don't want to be miserable, you can't change that. In order to change whether you're feeling miserable or not, change what you think. There are six words, six words that are the key to understanding um, how to make yourself less miserable. And that is learn to feel comfortable with uncertainty. Learn to feel uncomfortable with uncertainty. Life must not be a certain way. Eradicate the word must. 
Right. Stop shoulding, S-H-O-U-L-D, shoulding on yourself. Stop shoulding, S-H-O-U-L-D, on life. Stop shoulding, S-H-O-U-L-D, on other people. And learn how to accept. Not like, but recognize it happens. Now, I don't want to make myself feel miserable about what's happening. So I got to change my beliefs about what's happening. How? No, it doesn't have to be the way I think it would should be. I would prefer it. Is it terrible, horrible, and awful? No, it's just too bad. Three, I can't stand it? Of course you can stand it. You're still standing. You mean you just wish it were different? It's not horrible. It's just unfortunate. And I can tolerate it even though I don't like it. And by the way, it doesn't mean the other person is a horrible person who must be murdered or killed. It doesn't mean I'm a no good whatever who should die. If we're going to change the way we think, we're going to feel less miserable and feel a whole lot healthier and more empowered. Long answer. Sorry about that. <laughs> but that's the key. You know, that is key. And sometimes it uh, requires an extended answer. Oh, yeah. Um, to do this. Hey, so let's talk about how your book, the link is what you think addresses some of these uh, recommendations uh, on how a person could take the opportunity and discover themselves and listen to professionals like you to help them uh, get past any. So, Type of adversity it might be in. The book is filled with uh, insight, compassion, and hope. And it focuses on building those positive feelings with family, with friends, at work or in school, and building faith. And I teach something called a path to emotional well-being. And it's an acronym because, you know, I love acronyms. P stands for pause. Take a, take a breather. The space between the stimulus and the response is, the, is where you have power to pause, to practice the pause. Bump, but a bump, 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 bump. Wait a minute. Maybe it's something else. Bump, but a bump, bump. Hmm. What could it be? So that's the P in path. A Acknowledge what you feel. I am so angry. And then T, think about what it is you're thinking, you're telling yourself that's making you so angry. And then H. So we have pause. We have acknowledge what you feel. T, think. And then H, help yourself. Stop and reframe what you're thinking about that situation. The other person did you wrong. Okay, it happens. It'd be better if he didn't or she didn't or they didn't. But I can deal with it. I may not like it, but I can deal with it. Am I as miserable now? No, I'm not. I still don't like it. I accept it. So the book teaches these kinds of tools to and the importance of expressing gratitude out loud the importance of demonstrating kindness whenever you have a chance publicly the importance of savoring joy outwardly whenever you can that's what the book is about and it takes my points to ponder that i have put out on facebook and linkedin i invite all the listeners to connect with me on facebook this month uh, and linkedin and i will You'll share with you every day, five points to ponder. So the book, one page, five points. Next page, five points. Next page, five points. Very simple, easy read. Wow. You know what, Doc? Uh, one thing I haven't gotten a copy of is your book. I got to get it. I got to get oh, it. Now. I'm going to send a copy to you. I thought I, you had I, one. I got to get it. I got to get it now. You know, hey, Doc. What are the common, uh, uh, okay, how can we best deal with adversity when we are making ourselves suffer? <laughs> well, 
<laughs> We're making ourselves suffer. It, it's not it, so it's kind of like self-inflicted. Uh, because our mindset might not be right, and we're making ourselves suffer. What are three to four key thoughts that you know that add to misery? Misery when we are in that lane where it ain't nobody else, it's us. So remember this pain is inevitable, you trip and break your knee, I promise you, you're going to have pain. Suffering, that's a choice. And you just said that. We don't have to suffer. We may have to have pain. So a couple of key points. Number one, understand that the more rigid, inflexible, demanding thinking you have in your life, things just must be different. I have to have what he has. She shouldn't be that way. The more rigid, inflexible you're thinking, the worse you're going to feel. The more you catastrophize, you take, you make mountains out of molehills instead of making molehills out of mountains. Did I say that correctly? I think I say. I think I did. We make mountains out of molehills. We catastrophize. This is horrible. You want to know what's horrible? Go to Children's Hospital, cancer ward, and look at a four-year-old little girl who's got brain cancer. You know what's horrible and awful? Look at people's lives who are upended, who are whose lives are destroyed. That's that's very bad. But catastrophize over a million other little things. No. The third, so we have rigid thinking, catastrophizing, and then we have um, something where we have personal, where we have I can't stand it itis, I call it. I can't stand it itis. Mm -hmm. Inflammation of thinking, I can't tolerate, I can't bear, I can't stand this. When you demand and you catastrophize and you believe I can't tolerate things, boy, are you setting yourself to be miserable? Wow. This everybody need to hear this stuff. <laughs> everybody need to understand because just like we we mentioned in the beginning, we all have adverse adversity. And um, just like I mentioned earlier as well, it all depends on how we cope with that through our mindset. And you mentioned a t uh, something right now called misery. We don't have to be miserable. Uh, that's a self-inflicted thing. You know, so, but a lot of people choose to be miserable because they refuse to reach out and get help. What would you, we've got about two minutes before the break, what would you say to the listeners or viewers that feel that it's been no below them to reach out and get some help. There are lots of stigmas attached to getting help today. Uh, people think, well, if, if, if I ask for help means I'm weak. That thought, that equal sign, if I reach for help equals I'm weak. No, it doesn't. But even if it did, so what? I think that pe people have shame and weakness. They have a lot of misconceptions about mental health. They think that it's, it's something that is incurable. It's not. They have a fear of confidentiality. What if other people find out that I'm having therapy or coaching? Um, then there's these macho stereotypes, uh, particularly for men. Traditional masculinity stops people from seeking help. When I was a chief psychologist at, at the uh, San Diego Police Department back in the 1980s, we thought if a few of the thousands of cops ever came for help, they'd be a miracle. We handled it well. And we had a significant percentage of police officers growing over more than a decade that sought assistance because it wasn't because you have or you are a problem, but because we're going to teach you how to think. Therapy that's te that teaches people how to think is one thing. Therapy that just spends time 
you know, in the back of your life, when you were five years old, blaming your mother, father, that's not going to help anybody. So I think that we have to get rid of this notion of um, it means something bad about me. It doesn't. Wow. You know, Doc, I want to hold that that thought process because we got so much more to get to after the break. But I say you chose the right topic. <laughs> it's resonating with me. And I believe it's resonating with uh, others because uh, our numbers are over 4,000. <laughs> uh, just so YouTube alone is watching the show and uh, not counting the other 55 net uh, networks. But uh, we're going to take a station break. And we're going to come back and we're going to continue this great discussion with Dr. Michael Mantel. And if you want to be part of the conversation, all you have to do is go to the platform that you own. And I promise you, we'll get you an answer. It's your life. We'll see you shortly after break. First of all, I'm so happy and honored to be on it, to be in the Coffee Book 2023, Unified Brains E and the other organizations. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to uh, be a part of this collection. You're taking is a dead end What if love leaves you all jaded and broken What if that limb breaks your climbing out on Yeah, what if it all goes wrong That limb holds you oak tree strong What if this time nothing goes
Hello, welcome back to the James Coolest Show. It's your life, and what if it all goes right? I, I, I love it. Every, every time I talk to Amy about that, I mean, she's excited because she watches the show and and she see her plan, us playing her song. I, I'm telling you, though, I think it's a beautiful song. You know, I've I've told you, I've shared this with you before. I tell my clients, I teach them so many times before I even heard the song. Well, what if it doesn't work out? What if this doesn't go? And I say, but hey, but what if it goes right? And then when you introduce me to this song, ah, I just flip. I got to get a copy of that song on Amazon or wherever I can find it. But it is great. I'll tell you what I do. I, I shoot you the whole video. In oh, the song. great. I make sure you get it. But uh, it's it's good. Everybody, I tell my guests that when we play that song on the show and they don't even know what is it like? Wow. And then they start tailing their conversation around the song. It lifts you up, doesn't it? Music does that to you. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. You know, so, Doc, this has been extremely, um, I would say, wonderful conversation, inspiring. Because just like I mentioned to you earlier today, I, said, I'm, I, I don't even feel like I am in the best mood today. I don't know if you remember that. Uh, but after listening to some of the things that you talked about and continue to talk about today, I have brightened up. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> I, can see it. I see it. I do see it. And I appreciate your sharing that publicly. That's a sign of strength and courage. And you got through the story that said, oh, I better not say that because then people are going to think this about me or that about me. Who cares what they think? As my mother used to say all the time. What do you care what they think? <laughs> and, and you know, Doc, but well, believe it or not, and Michelle will tell you this as well. Uh, I really don't care what nobody thinks. I mean, I I I get to the point where I know me. I know what I do, I know my uh core values, uh ethical, all this and all that. I I, I just know me. I I over sixty-four years of living, I I guess I have conformed and developed my ways. But what I what I mean by that, Doc, is uh, my ways is godly and just loving everybody, not seeing people as black, white, green, gold, or purple, not seeing uh, others and saying, hey, I got more than you, you got more than me, uh, and other person that I'm mad because they ain't got this. I believe that you have to come to uh, some stability in your life on what's important to you. And I know you teach your clients this all the time. You can't worry about everybody else. You can't worry about, uh, and I, I call this stop counting other people's money. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, well, I, I like to tell, tell people when you compare, you will despair. Because you'll think, oh, I have so much more than them. But if you're comparing, you're going to bump into someone who's got more than you. I got to tell you real quickly, you talk about not, not, not getting stuck on the outside. If yeah. I share this with you before on the air, it's worth sharing again. I was a guest on Oprah Winfrey's show numbers of times. So one of the times I was on, a, a woman came up and said, uh, she raised her hand in the audience, and she said, we're talking, she had me have to talk about race issues in america and i was very honored that she brought me in to talk about that mm -hmm. so this woman said you know i don't see differences in color i don't see any differences in color and i was a young guy and i had a lot of guts and i said oprah would you come up come up to me please and she said right now i said yeah come on up she said oh okay we're live you know there's millions of people watch i said yeah, let's come on up she comes out and I said, now, could you put your cheek right next to mine? And she said, what? I said, don't worry. We're on television. You know, she puts her cheek <laughs> next to mine. And I said to her, now, Michelle, you got to hear this. I said to the woman in the audience, you don't see a difference in the color between Oprah and me? She said, well, um, uh, uh, uh. I said, of course there's a difference. But we look beyond the outside. To that which lies within. That's 
what we do. We're not, you don't get stuck here, but let's not pretend. So I think that the idea is that uh, there's a lot of things we can do to up level our emotions and our health. And the key is not, I should be the same color. I should have that. I'm telling you, I'll say it again. Demanding, inflexible, rigid thinking is killing us and our culture. Let's be flexible. Let's make I, believe, I believe we must be flexible. Well, we must. What do you mean we must? <laughs> we must be, be better if we were flexible. Well, well, well yeah, I, I believe we must be flexible. But and but then you have a lot of closed-minded individuals, Doc, uh, that uh, they listen to others and they march toward others. I follow no man, no man, rule and regulation based on that man. I have to do the research, and we got, we got a show tomorrow about that, Doc. You got to tune in on this one. Michelle and I got this show tomorrow. Uh, but um, You know, Dr. Mantel, I'm sorry. Go ahead, James. <laughs> just like Dr. D. Hawkins uh, just put, when you compare, you despair. Yes, that's Dr. D is a, a, a well-renowned, well I mean, everything. I, I've been trying to get her on the show. I ain't been able to get her on ever. Yes, she is. But, but hopefully one day we're going to get her on. Uh, but um, I like her comment, when you compare, you despair. That's what I tell and, people and, all and the time. That, that is so true, Doc. And Ben, uh, Ben, uh, you got a comment uh, here that says, to happiness right there. Ben, we have ben you, know that is? you know who that is? That's ben? ben Mantel. <laughs> that's our son. <laughs> oh, that's Benjamin. Hey, that's Benjamin. Uh, your, your, your honor. <laughs> your honor, right? <laughs> uh, that's so your honor. Let, let, let me let me offer you five more tips. Okay. Uh, because I know Michelle wants us to get back on topic. <laughs> okay. Let me offer you five more tips. Some keys to happiness, as Ben says. Number one, it's a daily event. Okay. So it's a daily set of habits. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to be teaching a three day a studio on physician well being to the American Society of Hematology later in the year mm -hmm. and be choosing a number of specific habits for well being. On no specific day, but today's Wednesday. We'll start with Wednesday. Start a conversation about mental health. Talk about mental health. Another day, make a list of five things you're grateful for. Go to sleep at night and say, what went right today? And then when you wake up in the morning, say, what might go right today? So you start your mindset with gratitude and appreciation and joy. Then next day, practice positive affirmations. What if it does go right? Get that song, play it in your ear, play it in your car, play it wherever you are. What if it goes right? Next, take care of your physical well being. Exercise, eat right, stay hydrated. Exercise above all, more important than anything else you're going to do. And Dr. J.C. Cooley, your six-mile-a-day run, we know you're, you are committed to that. Take you know, a break. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I'm committed to that because um, my mindset, you know, and, uh, and once you get a positive mindset on things that you have to do to better yourself, you, you have to do it. Once you get a positive mindset, even if you have adversities, even if things are going to come on the curve, because they will. Right. You have to have the right mindset. And even when it comes down to, well, uh, I'm going to deal with this by myself. Certain things you can't deal with by yourself. Doc. No, absolutely not. That's why you need help. But two things I want to point out. I don't ever think I have hey, to hey, do doc, 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 hold, hold this until after the break. break. I know I'm going to get killed if I don't take this break. Okay. You know, so. But hold on to the two things and you'll we'll pick it up so you won't let me forget and I won't let you forget. 
<laughs> I tell you, whichever platform that you're watching this on, wow. Great conversation, Lisa, I think. And Dr. Michael Mantell is extraordinary. And that's why he is the, the guest co-host for 306 Degrees of Health every Wednesday. And uh, the show is doing from, I think, extraordinary. Yes, but we still got some more that we're going to talk about in, in this. We're gonna, then we're going to have him talk a little bit more about his book. The link is what you think. And he's going to tell you how to get the book. But if you want to be part of the conversation, all you do is just go to the comments, ask any questions that you might have, or pick up the phone down 1-888-344-1170. It's your life. And we'll talk to you shortly after the break. Really get a chance to know who you are. And once you know who you are, you truly know who you are. Love who you are. Love who you are. You're a masterpiece. Love who you are. Love who you were born to be. Love, love me some me. That's what I'm talking about. When you leave high school, you gotta know today or tomorrow, or hopefully today, what your plans are. Hopefully, you know, there is no bad decision unless there is no plan. Create, collaborate, commit with confidence. Commit with what? Confidence. Commit with what? Confidence. In everything that you do. James Cooley Show is your life, and uh, we got a whole lot of folks uh, that's uh, watching and listening to the show that's sending little quick comments, and uh, Ben, uh, your honor, Ben, Benjamin, I, I, I'm still waiting on you to <laughs> the invitation to the show, I, and I see that you're watching now, but so you, you can't say that you didn't get the invite. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Dr. D, I'm watching you as well. Uh, you can't say you didn't get the invite. So right. Please let us know. Because, you know, Dr. Michael Mantel is a sensation. Dr. Michelle Cooley. Sarah, our team is fantastic. And I tell you, nobody do it like we do. <laughs> you know? Hey, Doc, we probably got about seven minutes left in the right. show. 
But See, I'm, I'm, used, I'm used to getting all these little signs one minute to the break. I'm not getting any of this stuff today. I'm a guest. What, what, you, you, you're a guest, dog. Yeah, listen, <laughs> but, so I was, I, I, before the break, I was talking about a couple of things that I want to make a point about. I got a couple of things I want to say in the next couple of minutes, just to mm -hmm. be sure we cover as much as I can. Number one, practice thinking like this. I don't ever have to do anything. Mm -hmm. I get to do things. Oh my God, I have such a big, busy guy. I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do this. No, you get to do those things. When you change have to to get to, just think about how that changes how you approach things. You don't go at it with anger and misery and frustration. You go at it with a little more of gratitude and appreciation. The next thing real quickly is we always talk about adversity happening to us. This happened to me. Oh, the traffic did this to me. The, my boss did that to me. She, no, nothing happened. Nothing happens to you. With the right mindset, you see that everything happens for you. Not to me, for me. So just change those words. Reframe it. Get to, not have to. It happens for me, not to me. Make sense? Please practice it and watch the change you bring about in your in your level of happiness. And, you know, Doc, uh, one thing that I forgot to shoot down the line is I believe that our show, uh, 363 uh, Health, is so positive and so educational. I forgot to even promote this video today, but I'm going to do it right now. Hey, Doc, uh, the reason I did that because I, I don't want to forget about your book. The link is what you think. Can you tell our, our viewers, we've got three minutes, uh, a little bit more about your book. How can they get your book and what would the book provide to them? Of course, they can find it on Amazon and everywhere else in the world, like all books, your books as well, which I was very honored to write a forward for. Um, and uh, But I invite people to follow me on Facebook and LinkedIn, where I share every day five points of mental well-being. And the book, the link is what you think, every page is filled with a collection of five key points. So it's a quick, easy read. And I promise that you'll get a tip every day to lift your life. We live in times today that are filled where, where the current events uh, just overwhelm us where loneliness fit almost 60 percent of adults say they're lonely technology is drowning us social drivers of health and difficulties whether it's um, access to health or or uh, finances or education or the communities we live in they're harming our well-being and our mental health so we have to find support we have to reach out we have to set limits uh, and boundaries on our technology we have to change what we can and learn how to deal with what we can't and learn wherever you can the healthy coping skills that promote this well-being, mood boosters, uh, making sure your basic needs are handled, uh, your physical activity, your, 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 your sleep, your food intake, um, stress relievers, all of these things. Reach out if you need help. Find a friend. You can say, you know, I'm not doing too well today. And if someone says that to you, be honored. Not that I have to listen. I get to listen. Wow. Uh, Doc, <laughs> as I say, and not talk to you almost every day. Yes, uh, we do. The wealth, the knowledge, the vision, the understanding that you bring to others is invaluable. And um, I believe that we have to do this. I know we do. Uh, 
360 degrees every Wednesday, but I believe that we have to continue to do these things and bring uh, advice, or bring joy, bring recommendations to others. So, Doc, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to out your busy schedule to come on the James Cooley show. It's your life. You know, so you, I love you, my friend. I love you, my friend. I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Michelle Cooley for putting together another absolutely wonderful show. But most importantly, I'd like to thank our viewers and our listeners for tuning in to uh, our show, It's Your Life, uh, Monday through Friday, and also Sunday, syndicated on the radio, Sunday, uh, KCBQ AM 1170 and 96.1, syndicated out of San Diego at 10 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. As I always say, we want everybody to dream big, think big, and be big at everything you do. But most important, I have to thank the audience for, for giving us another wonderful show. Yes, your life. We'll be back tomorrow. Same time, same place. We'll see you then. Thank you.